Right, just uh, bringing in my little mushroom dragon friend here for company. Hello, it's Thursday, and today we are going to be making the final canvas. So what you can see behind me are the succulents that were kind of for winter, a spring floral theme, an ocean reef theme, and finally today we are going to be using this one to create a mushroom theme. <laughs> So we're going to just start by doing a little bit of research first, um, just looking at some reference images and kind of trying to firm up the idea a little bit, because I know that I want to do mushrooms, but I don't really know what else I specifically have in mind here. So the sketching is the answer to that. So I don't really know if I want to do like forest floor or if we want to do like a fallen log or even the side of a tree it's hard because I know I want the canvas to be upright to hang on the wall like the others do I feel like a lot of mushrooms are almost better viewed from like this angle instead we're not gonna necessarily let that stop us it's just we have to think about it a little bit harder right away I'm seeing the basic mushroom that you think of when you think of a mushroom it's the the red one with the white spotties So I think where this one here differs from the other ones is that the the individual pieces I feel are going to need a lot more work. So I'm going to need to be a little bit more careful about how many pieces I need to make because when I'm just making basic tubes and stitching a basic detail onto them, it's a little bit different to making a whole bunch of mushrooms that all need their gills stitched on. It's a little bit different. And at the moment, the plan is for some like dry reds and browns, like some very like warm colors oranges reds browns maybe even a yellow or so um just to lean lean really into that like autumnal vibe that said my personal favorite when it comes to mushrooms is like working from a very dark background up into like some neon blues and greens so uh who knows what this will actually end up as not a lot of height differentiation there but then you've also got like the the very domey toadstooly fellows I have to be very careful that this doesn't end up looking kind of graphic, if you know what I mean. You're flipping what I'm Brian there. Okay, there we go. That's an interesting view from the side of these mushrooms where you sort of see a bunch of them like growing out and over. Let's try on trees. Trees are a vertical canvas. This should help us. Oh, pretty. Um, then we've got some that are just like super layered where it's like layer upon layer upon layer of like orange stuff and that's those are literally just like flat discs so okay we've got flat discs we've got like chunkier pancake type ones i'm talking like pancakes right we don't we don't mess around with like these pancakes versus crepes and then you've, we've still got like domes so I'm, th I'm thinking maybe the tree is the right vibe for this because we can still do like the domey ones they just have to have like swerved stems that can come in like all different sorts of thin and thick. I think I'm going to be able to use just as much creative liberty as I want in terms of like the mushrooms that have the caps as to what like size and shape the caps are, what colors I use for them, just because I feel like it looks like pretty much just about anything is within a realm of plausibility here. Oh, those are pretty. They're, they're, those are shiitake, I think, where they almost like fan out sideways and they've got like lots of gilly bits. The sketching is chaotic. <laughs> okay, so these ones are cap, then we have shelf, and then there's a third type which is jelly. So maybe I need to investigate jelly a little bit more. They look like tiny little friends poking their heads out to say hello. We've got like little ones. So that's kind of an interesting shape. So that's. I think my problem here is that a lot of them are. They're kind of all in the mid ground. I almost just described them as mid. <laughs> Which is just like not quite what we're talking about. Uh, hopefully it turns out better than mid. But uh, like a lot of them occupy like a middle ground, whereas like there's not a lot of like depth and and you want like a prominent feature, like a foreground type of thing, and then you want mid, a bunch of mid ground detail and a bunch of background detail, and that's kind of how you like build the interest here. So the background detail could all just kind of be filled with pieces of bark. You know what I haven't looked at though? Moss. Let's have a look at some moss because I feel like moss also fits this theme a little bit. We'd have to get the right green so that it doesn't, like it has to be a warm tone green, not a cool tone green, but I, I can, we can manage that. Okay, moss is just friendly little green lumps. So we could like sneak some like moss in amongst and just pretend this is just a very wet tree. 
can be a wet tree if it wants. Right, I'm trying to like look at the canvas and get like a feel. What like speak to me, canvas? What do you want? I'm thinking that I have to re remember that like the lessons from the previous three canvases, which is that this doesn't have to be something realistic, you know? It doesn't have to be something that we would ever encounter in any kind of natural environment. So there can be a bunch of different like mushrooms and, and fungus and stuff living together that doesn't normally go. We know that we're going to have some shelf mushrooms, potentially a little cluster of these little like cutie patootie jelly bean type ones and probably some moss and some bark in the background. But what I want is like one really cool kind of mushroom. So let's just literally try looking up cool mushroom. Let's look up cool mushrooms. Oh, those are some cool mushrooms. Okay, we are, yeah, now we've got, now I've got, I've been served some like lacy ones. Some ones that look like they've got eyes. Oh, that one there, that's, that's what, an ink cap, is it? That's something, but it's kind of like drippy. And it's got like a gradient happening as well. It's kind of peeling all over. Interesting texture. How do I represent a gradient just in pencil? Let's do some cross hatching. Thank you, high school art. <laughs> some of these can't be real. Mycology is so interesting. Tell me what that one is. That looks like some kind of like ancient dragon that knows all of our secrets. <laughs> but I don't know if it'll necessarily read immediately as mushroom, which is something I'm worried about. I do want this to read as mushroom. Like what even is that? It's kind of swirly lump, and then it's got like these big juicy red blisters all over it. So interesting, but I don't know if it really fits with what I'm thinking about for this. And these lacy ones, they kind of look like they've got like veils on. Another like pointy cap. The pointy cap ones seem to have the like the most personality to them. I think it's okay for me to also like lean into just like a, the barest hint of Halloween with this as well. Maybe, like I've, I included a bee in one and I included a starfish in another. I'm thinking of including a spider web maybe in this one here if we need just something a little bit different. Because that will just like, just provide another point of interest for us. So kind of like where we did the summer one, from memory anyway. <laughs> I might be wrong here. I don't think I'm going to be able to like do a composition right off the bat. I think we need to pick some colors and I need to just sit with them and maybe even start just like trying out a few pieces and shapes. And from there, a composition I think will start coming together a little bit more than it is now. So yeah, let's look at some yarn. <laughs> so we're going to have to refer to the color wall behind me to see what's actually going to work here because I don't want to go too brightly coloured. I do want to feel this to feel very like warm and I want red and orange to be the main takeaway here which is hard because I know there's like two cubes doing, like completely devoted to reds and oranges but I don't really know. It's not really my comfort zone you know so we're just going to do our best here. Alrighty maybe we start in here and just pull out all of the oranges and reds we've kind of started already. Not a whole lot in the bucket anymore, is there? We cleared it out. Yeah, and then I think we'll definitely need to pull a couple of browns like this. Probably a harsh orange. So this is kind of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like warm versus cool colors. This one here is a very pink red versus a very orange red. So this is a warm color. That's a cooler color. At least that's my own sort of rudimentary understanding of this thing, okay? Blue's completely ruling out for the moment. And if we're going to use any greens, It'll have to be maybe this one that's very Christmassy. Or this one here could be a nice dry moss. So that's army green. So that, that potentially is an option as well. So I'm just going to finish going through these colours and like working out what I think is going to work and what isn't. And, and then we'll check in. <laughs> Okay, so these are the colors that I've kind of settled on. Now, I did a little bit of a digital test, and I'll, I'll play a little bit of that now. And in order to do that, what all I did was I took a photo of the colors I was thinking about, and then I was able to, like, use the eyedropper tool to, like, play around with them a little bit digitally. Sometimes I find that that's, like, an easier way to visualize what I'm trying to do. Um, but I don't know if we'll end up using all of these colors, but I did want to make sure that we had 
three tones of beige, three tones of orange, three tones of yellow. And uh, I wanted to make sure I had variety. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we'll end up using all of these, but it's nice to have them there. So the other thing that I did was I played around with what potential shape blockings might look like on this. And I came up with a couple of different ideas. So the first is that we do this as a bark texture and then just build a couple of areas of mushroom and, and like some bridging things as though it was like all one scene. And the second one, which I do think is more in keeping with the other three in this series, is that we kind of just like block this out into like five or six different areas. I think odd an odd number of areas tends to look better for some reason. Uh, and just like fill each one of those areas with a different kind of like mushroom or fungi and then use like little bits of moss or bark just to like cover up any gaps between the two. So those are my two schools of thought at the moment. And I think that what we have to do next is literally just get our hook out and start making some little mushrooms and just feeling our way forward with, with the different colors that we have here. I think I'm just going to start with like the default mushroom, which is like the little dome cap ones. Probably in some yellows. Maybe. So like that. I think less of the brown in the middle might be the go, but I otherwise like the spike texture, so this was still kind of a worthwhile experiment. So that's that same thing again, but with less brown in the middle. This looks like a tiny jellyfish. So I still don't like it. I still don't like it. I'm going to frog it as well. The shape is right. The texture is okay. I just think maybe it's not designed for this yellow. This yellow ombre might not be the go here. Sorry, I'm going straight back to the yellow. I think if I just left off the brown, it'd fix everything. I think it's that, that goldy brown in the middle that's throwing me off. Oh, much better. That's what was needed. But this will have to be the smallest of this kind, I think. Now, do I try and build the stem? I think we do. I think I'm going to change the colour of this understem bit. This process does eventually speed up. Cute! Okay, cool. Yes. 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 First mushroom. Okay, so with our first mushroom accomplished, uh, the next one I think we should try, probably some of these shelfy ones. Now, I kind of want to do the pancake, the stripy pancake. I also need to try the like the flat orange ones at some point too. Hmm. So I think I'm going to base these ones on the sulfur shelf mushroom and they're all wibbly wobbly and cool. Yeah. I went and got some new colours. <laughs> Ombre. Right, so the plan for these is rather than working in a magic ring like I did for these ones here, is I'm going to do a base chain the length that I want the mushroom to be, because that makes it kind of customizable, and then make use of the loops on both sides of the piece to kind of work around it. Yeah, so that's my plan. I've pulled out a lot of different colors here. Now, this isn't even meant to be the stripy one. I'm just like, for some reason, convinced I can do an ombre, so we'll see how that goes. Um... <laughs> Yeah, we're just we're trying something. So there's got loops there, and I'm just trying to disguise them without having to use twisted single crochet. Because <laughs> it's faster, for me anyway. <laughs> I feel like that works. I feel like that works really well. So there's one option for the shelves. It's got some striation to it. It's got some colour to it. I think it'd be fine, but I want to try something else. I want to try to get it a little thinner. 
than this and a little bit more vibrantly orange. I feel I feel like I'm in danger of this becoming a very yellow piece when I actually want it to be a very orange piece. So I'm just going to try one more thing. Okay, so I like this a lot better. That's not to say I'm going to discard this one completely, but I definitely like this one better. I've got a problem with having a lot of like loose ends on it. We're going to leave them in a bunch of different sizes. It's got some dimension, it's got some colour, but it's reading very orange and red and I like that. I mean to start a new ball of this dark brown because I want to use it for the background, but I'm wondering if I can like take a strand from each of these two and use that to create like my base tree. Might need a bigger hook. <laughs> so I I walked away for a bit after playing with a few of the shapes. I feel better prepared to put a composition together. So I'm just going to rough out a thumbnail for that now. Which is just a really important part of my process because if I don't understand an idea when it's small, how on earth am I going to understand it when it's bigger? Okay, there's that thumbnail. Because I don't think it was super visible before. And basically this is what it translates to. We're going to get some colour coding markers out again. So we've got a couple of really big dome mushrooms with some nice frilly bits and maybe some spots. It's a cop out but they're popular for a reason. It's because they're really cute guys. I can't help myself I think they're adorable. So we'll do one there and maybe one off on a fun angle here and like the stems aren't necessarily going to be straight they're going to be like curved around to do whatever it is they gotta do. And for now I'm just going to colour code them as red. They're the most red one over here so they'll also be the most red one here. Better label the whole thing, right? <laughs> um, okay, so next we have some of these little shelfy boys and I was playing with a couple of different shape options for those but that's my favourite so that's basically what those are going to look like and they're going to be up here. Just got a little stack of crepes specifically up there. And we're going to have some more down here filling this gap because I think the, the real hint to just making things look like they belong is having them appear in multiple places. And I am going to colour code those ones in orange. Like so. So then we have what's going to be some really little mushrooms. Just tiny little clusters. Now I know we made this one here before but I consider it to be a small form of a larger mushroom. <laughs> Whereas like these ones here are going to be small and their stalks are all curve under and they're going to be entirely in like a cream or yeah honestly at this point I'm thinking literally just cream for these ones here and potentially some more of them like sticking out wherever needed to fill the gaps. They're going to be kind of one of our space filling options. Again they will not actually be pink but it's a lot easier to have a colour coded key. Okay so next up Let's fill in some yellow mushrooms. So these ones here are kind of a very round dome and then my yellow mushrooms are going to be pointier and they're going to have this kind of colour markation on them. They're also going to be a little bit bigger so they're going to have some like fun caps to them. Now if I thought I could get away with it I would do those um drippy, I think they're called, they're called like death something <laughs> mushrooms with like the drippy edges to them. And I do them in like a dark purple, but I just I don't know if that's the vibe today for this particular piece. But I still think those mushrooms are really freaking cool. So those ones there are going to go there and they're going to have like bright yellow tops. So that we're going to put some of those there and maybe some more of them over here if I don't get too sick of them. Then we are going to have some bark filling in the curves. So we have like, I've, I've sketched a few of them on here as just like rogue rectangles dotted about the place. I don't want them to be super visible. There's one there, there's one there. 
a few stretching up this way. Basically, the idea is that they're going to be used to cover the bases of things so that we can't really like see straight through to the canvas. I'm also going to do, I think, we're going to use our imaginations and pretend, there we go, we'll use this color. So I'm going to do some moss. I want to do like a swirl of fluffy, fuzzy moss through the middle here. Again, use just to help cover up some of the edges. I'm going to try and give this some like bobble and shape and dimension and not just have it a little green river. Have it like curve around the pieces because wherever there's moisture, you're going to end up with moss. Oh, I forgot to color in my, my pointy fellows. Got lazy. <laughs> um, and finally up here, I think we want some of those stacked pancake ones. Yeah do as many of those as we need to do and it looks like I've kind of swirled those in brown and orange here again I'm not committed to that color story for this because these might also just end up being like those um sulfur shelf ones that I was looking at before as well I'm not sure yet but uh I'll draw the stripes in for now so that we know what they are so yeah we have a plan <laughs> all right so we have a little bit of a plan laid out and we've done some experimental shapes but they don't really count because none of them are really official final shapes so i don't think i can really use anything that i've made so far except for maybe these little shelf ones which i do think have some potential i've tried them with like a little bit of a red around the edge and a little bit of the yellow around the edge so like if it needs a little bit more brightness we'll go with the yellow if it needs a little bit more like grounding in the good earth tones we'll go with the red it's it's pretty straightforward but i think what i'm going to do is start making some some real mushrooms. Now that I've got a bit of a plan, it's a little bit easier to draw a straight line between where I am and where I want to be. So I think I'm going to start just by making some of these yellow mushrooms. Um, I have a rough idea of what size I want them to be. They're not super big, but I do need at least half a dozen of them. <laughs> it's, the, it's the bulk making of pieces that gets really tricky with these projects. So that's kind of the start of my little moss piece. You might be able to see it a little bit better on the top down screen there. So what I'm going to do with this is I think just create a long stripe that's the same kind of width the whole way up. And then so when I go to sew it on, so some of it like so it's folded over and bobbled and some of it so that it's flat to kind of get a little bit more of like a natural wibble wobble to it rather than trying to stitch in a wibble wobble. We'll do it in, in we'll get it in editing. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to create a long stripe of that that's about a little just a little bit longer than the canvas is tall and uh, I've got a long way to go with that yeah <laughs> okay so I got this far before I got bored ah uh, <laughs> But it is a really glorious bobbly texture and I actually think that it might help it out a little bit if it's in a couple of different pieces. So it'll look a little bit like this. See how like I'm just like squidging it and, and pulling it. It's a bit dark to even show up on camera but a little bit like that. And then we've got like the little guys that are going to be down here in this little cluster. The base of a big mushroom for there. We've got a couple of these yellow ones for there. So oh and we've got the shelf mushrooms which will be like neat, 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 neat. I don't know if I'm gonna pull crowd those in over there or if I'm just gonna do like a separate panel of these here but one thing's clear is that I need to start working out the bark it's a really 
prominent feature in the background of this and I haven't really kind of resolved it yet. I did make this piece here, I've shown it before, even though both of these are browns, because one of them's a cool brown and one of them's a warm brown, uh, the warm brown <laughs> is kind of making the cool brown look blue. <laughs> here, I think I just need to pick one of these two colours and just commit to it. And given that this panel, I want it to be a warm panel, even if this feels way more barky, I think we're going to go, we're taking a big swing and we're going to go with the br dark brown. And it's going to be... So I'm a little nervous that the final panel of this series is going to be the one that I'm kind of taking the biggest risk for because I can't like visualize it properly yet. But um, hopefully, hopefully it all works out in the end. I mean, it's, it's, it always tends to come down to like you got to trust the process, but that's not always really easy when when you're making the process up as you go. All right, I have a piece of bark. We've created a little dimension there. That means that uh. I can like fold it and create lips for pieces or like stretch it out and just fill spaces with it. So that's that's a solution. With the bark looking the way that it does, I'm a little happier to leave a little bit more breathing room on this one here, particularly compared to the ocean one, which I did kind of pack full of stuff. With the flower one, I grew a little bit more comfortable just making like a feature and then some breathing room. With this one here, I'm way more happy to have a lot more bark and like moss type stuff showing through and just have that little bit of breathing room. Okay, so now that we've managed a mushroom, I kind of feel like I just need to kick it into gear and start like mass producing a whole lot of these few mushrooms, right? Just like a whole lot of them, because we got a we got a square to fill. nice. I like this. Okay, so now we have all of these mushrooms. They're all just a little bit basic, just a little bit basic. So I think what we need to do is add some details to all of them. But in general, seeing them all together in one spot like this, I, I think I really like it. I think the ones that are crying out for the most detail are the largest ones. So these big red ones definitely need some like little spotty details in their gills. These yellow ones need their gills as well. And I'm tempted. <laughs> to add like some bright red or bright orange spots on top of them. Uh, all of them need their like loops disguised. Um, so all of, all of that needs to happen. But then like, I think we're really onto something here. <laughs>
I, I actually didn't notice how literal this inspiration was. <laughs> it's 1am. Okay, so I do feel like we are now at a point where we can start assembling. Now, I am going to pull on the lessons that we have learned in the previous three and make it a point to assemble these into chunks of things and then we can attach the chunks to the canvas rather than trying to like attach individual pieces to the canvas I think that that is definitely the way to go now I don't know if we have enough mushrooms but looking at our pieces all laid out like this I just don't think there'll be mushroom left so I had to make a bunch of extra base pieces including this one big one which I think might help with these little discs and just laying a bit of a foundation So the sewing's always really nerve-wracking because it always just feels like so permanent and final, but it's always fine. It's always it's easier once I get started, you know? I guess it's like that that blank page paralysis thing. But like the pieces, I think, are coming together really nicely. Like, look! That's really cool. That's really cool. So I have assembled a whole bunch of the chunks here, but just because of how we're gonna have to layer it up to assemble it on the canvas itself, I think I need to start attaching pieces. So I'm going to start with our big orange square here, and I'm just going to attach the middle panel of it and leave these two sides a little bit flappy so I can just still like tuck things underneath if I want to, and uh, just try and organically build it from there and hope I don't mess it up. mushroom's putting up a real fight. Uh, it's hard to work out where to fit it into the composition because I think I've put this one up too high but it's too late to do anything about it, so we kind of have to roll with it. So I have had to make a lot more like little filler pieces like a lot more of the little like moss and and like bark squares in different shapes and sizes just to kind of fill these gaps as we go but so far so good. I'm just working on like layering things up so that you can't see any of the canvas anymore. So I just have to kind of finish sewing these pieces on and honestly that is just taking so long this time. I swear the others came together a lot faster than this but we're getting there. <laughs> so I've laid out all of my pieces here and the problem I think I'm running into is that I kind of want to do a little like spider web branching down from one piece to another but there's not a whole lot of real estate left on this canvas. I'm glad I actually took the time to literally just get this strand of cotton out because uh, I don't think I want a cobweb anymore. And so we'll just sew the rest of these pieces on now. <laughs> so there is our finished mushroom canvas. And there are all four canvases together. Now I did learn a lot through as I worked through this process. So I think that you can kind of see that skill progression from that first one, which I still love. It's kind of really cool just to see how much more confident I got with the shapes I was willing to use and the colors and the details I was willing to add. It's funny because like it means that all four of these, to me they I know that they go together, they're part of a series, but I don't know if they necessarily look like they do. <laughs> so that does wrap up this series for now. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. That's not to say that I won't be using canvases again in future, but anyway, I hope to see you next week. Okay, bye. Can you guess? what the theme is going to be. <laughs> it's not even October yet. Seasonal plant? Seasonal slash plant theme series? <laughs> so you were standing just a second ago. <laughs> like, I might regret saying this, but this feels a little bit like a cop-out. But, uh... You're not a cop-out. I'm sorry I said that.
One more test. Welcome to the design process where we change our mind as often as we need to. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is, I don't know, I don't know what we're going to do. And then we'll, then we'll work out what to do about those shelf, shelf shrooms. Shelf fungus? In any case, they're a fun guy. Oh, this desk is a mess and I'm so sorry about that. Okay, so it is the next day and I do think we have a lot of our pieces made and we can probably start assembling. Assem assembling? Assembling. Assembling! Assembling!